it, it was right here, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, my background is actually in silent film uh, and silent film preservation. Uh, I worked as, a, as an archivist for a number of years at the George Eastman House, and they're, um, it's one of the big four, uh, big four or five film archives in the U.S. Uh, so I'm interested in silent film. Um, I was kind of interested in getting a gauge on what interest there might be uh, for the Hollywood in particular to show silent films. Um, so I um, connected with, uh, there's a musician pianist named uh, Tom Roberts who's kind of known around um, for accompanying silent films and he had worked with um, uh, Dan Kamen who's on our advisory board. He's a, a world-renowned chaplain uh, imitator. He's a, you know, a, a mime in general, but uh, he, he taught um, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, and Johnny Depp how to imitate Chaplin, uh, as well as even taught Fred Rogers how to do it as well. Um, so we teamed up with Tom and Dan, had, the com had them come here, <coughs> um, and uh, Tom had scored two old Chap uh, Chaplin films um, from the late teens, uh, one's called The Rink, uh, and I'm forgetting the title of the other one. But uh, so he was able to present his, his scores, so the music was just beautiful. And um, we had, and, and Dan spoke beforehand, ex extremely knowledgeable about um, a, a chaplain and, and, and just the, uh, the films, um, was able to tell some really interesting stories about uh, a chaplain. And we had about 80, 85 people for that, so it was a great, a great first showing. Um, now that kind of performance, that's kind of rare nowadays. Right. Yeah, uh, you can't find it very often. No, you're not gonna find it in the you know, multiplex. No, <laughs> that's correct. You're not going to find that in the multiplexes. Uh, you know, I think there is a little bit of a trend for some of the multiplexes to show some classics here or there, uh, especially when they're related to holidays and that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, you know, I think our niche as a as an old cinema, um, you know, the Hollywood in particular, we show classics. We show. Um, uh, you know, we do series like silent films. Um, we show a lot of independent films. We also rent the theater out for um, people to show their the films that they've made. We show horror films. We show documentaries. Um, uh, we do all sorts of different series. Um, so our approach, and we you know we do do new films, but they tend to be uh, yeah again fair not fair that you're not going to find at um, you know the waterfront or um, uh, some of the bigger. Um, places. And so something that, you know, we're trying to figure out is our place in Pittsburgh. Uh, the Hollywood um, served as uh, Pitts, one of Pittsburgh's primary second-run houses for, for decades and decades um, until the 80s and, um, you know, with home video came in uh, and the multiplexes kind of started to rise. That's when the Hollywood started to hit some, some troubles. Uh, second-run theaters uh, not a very sustainable model anymore, um, especially for a single screen cinema. Um, there are, you know, dollar theaters out there that do second runs um, uh, that are, you know, able to, uh, to get by with concessions and that sort of thing. But as a single screen, we couldn't, we wouldn't be able to do that anymore. So we're still trying to find our niche in, in Pittsburgh. I mean, of course, there's Pittsburgh filmmakers. Um, I'm a big fan of theirs. I, I go, to, go to their theaters uh, when I can. Uh, the Manor is great as well, um, and the Oaks, and um, uh, you know, there's other theaters. But so you know, we're trying to figure out our our place. Um, you know, Pittsburgh filmmakers has been around for a long time, uh, and the Manor, and they you know, often because of the relationships they have with distributors, they can get first pick on some things. And uh, so we're trying to figure out what our place is in, in that. I think we're, you know, we're redefining ourselves as we're historically a cinema, we'll continue to be a cinema, but we're an arts organization. Uh, and that means that, you know, we're, we're also, we're doing live music. Um, we, we're not always showing films, we're doing live music. Um, you know, we'll do, uh, we're gonna do a battle of the bands with the Dormont Rec Association soon. Um, we do, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of looking at other things like um, poetry series. Um, we rent out the theater a lot. We do, we do birthday parties. We do weddings. We had people get married on the stage here. Um, I think our idea is we want to uh, be an arts space uh, and venue for the community, for Dormont, for the South Hills, and for Pittsburgh in general. Um, you know, we're right near the T. Um, 
and uh, kind of a great spot along Potomac. I think we have a, a positive impact on the business around us. Uh, there's Fredo's Deli next door, which I think gets a little spillover from us and, uh, and some of the other businesses along um, Potomac as well and hopefully on West Liberty. Um, yeah, but so we're, when I came in in September, <clears throat> um, the organization had gone through a little bit of a reorganization process. Um, they were looking for someone with some fundraising experience and I had I definitely had a film background. Um, and so one of the things I, I did initially was to look at our programming uh, and to start incorporating um, a, a variety of, uh, of films and events and series. And that's something that we can talk about more is the, um, the series that we've started up just in the past couple months. So, uh, and I think that kind of builds regular audiences for particular uh, types of events. This last weekend we did, um, we have a series called So Bad It's Good, um, in which we have local uh, uh, comedians and, and, and comedy troops come in and heckle a movie live. Uh, we did Sudden Death uh, this weekend, which is a Jean-Claude Van Damme classic. And, um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, I, I hear it went really well. People loved it, and uh, it was a great night. So we're going to continue that series. Um, and yeah, we started up a senior matinee series, uh, 2 o'clock, one, uh, one Thursday a month. We're doing that and um, reaching out to local um, senior organizations, um, you know, again, trying to hit, you know, our mission is to provide access to film and art for, uh, you know, all the, the entire spectrum, including season, uh, seniors, and we're doing a kids matinee too. So, you know, just diversifying programming and, um, uh, you know, trying to make it interesting to a broad uh, spectrum of people. Um, we're kind of known. You know, one thing that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm both embracing and fighting a little bit. We're kind of known in Pittsburgh as a horror theater uh, to some degree, uh, which is great because horror fans love to get together and watch horror together. Uh, and it's fantastic. And uh, in fact, we're having March 2nd, a big fundraiser, uh, Night of the Living Dead. We're having some cast and crew here for that. It's already sold out. Um, and uh, it's raising thousands of dollars for us um, for our uh, upgrade to digital projection. So I absolutely embrace <laughs> the horror community. But I, you know, um, I think there are people in, in Dormont and the South Hills and Pittsburgh who uh, aren't interested in horror. Uh, they might be interested in foreign films or documentaries and that sort of thing. So we're you know, programming those as well. You know, Gen Xers are, like you said, are growing up having had, you know, having kids, and there's this whole new audience that didn't, you know, sometimes it doesn't always occur to us that they, yeah, they haven't seen some of the classics from the 80s. The 80s doesn't seem that long ago to me, but um, but uh, there you have it. So yeah, we'll show Goonies, Jaws, some of the classics, and uh, we'll do quite well with them. Uh, I think we were, you know, I wasn't here when we showed that uh, Goonies, but it, you know, the line was around the block at one point. Um, and you know, everyone, the people working at the theater were like, "Wow, this is great!" And so we definitely are programming more of those family movies. You know, uh, in a lot of cases, family movies, um, so you can bring your children here and kind of expose them to uh, the films that we, you know, Back to the Future and all that stuff that we we grew up seeing in a classic setting. In a classic setting, exactly. Um, let's see. Yeah, if you'd like, we can continue our stroll. 